Hello and welcome to a new term of Warwick iCast. Coming up, news of what could prove an important breakthrough in our understanding of degenerative diseases in humans, such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Emily Little has been talking to the researchers behind it, starting with the team leader, Professor Peter Sadler. The primary role of iron in the blood is to carry molecular oxygen, to transport oxygen around the body to the places where we, we need it. That's carried by a protein called haemoglobin in, in your red cells. This red pigment in red cells is called haemoglobin. So that's inside the red cells. The protein that we're talking about today is called transferrin. It's in the fluid part of the, of the blood outside the red cells and it carries the iron all around our body and delivers it to cells where it's used for making enzymes uh, and so on. And you've got some experiments going on here that demonstrate how you can see the iron in the blood. Can you explain a little bit more about those? That's right, because the protein that we have in our blood is called serum transferrin. It's a particular iron binding protein, but there's a very similar protein in the whites of an egg just as there is in, in milk. In fact, in breast milk, there's a very similar protein called lactoferrin. But in egg whites, you'll find ovotransferrin. It's very similar to the protein that we have in our blood. And I can demonstrate to you how the protein binds iron. We can see a color change. It's a very dramatic, vivid color change when the protein binds to iron. And what about in food? Iron's obviously present in green vegetables, in meat, in, in bread, and cornflakes, is that right? Well, that's right. Of course, we need several milligrams of iron a day. We have to take in iron. And people are conscious that they need to take in iron. If you look on the sides of the cornflake packet, you'll see it says iron. And you, you may wonder, what kind of iron is, is in those cornflakes? So following on from looking into iron in the blood and transferrin, you found these fibres that actually rust. This was a very unexpected finding. People thought that this protein was simply a protein that carried iron around in the body and delivered it to cells. Nobody really had looked for interactions between the protein molecules and somehow we found that different molecules of this protein can interact with each other, aggregate and form these very interesting fibres. What's interesting here is uh, what Peter Sadler just found with transferrin and these um, uh, amyloid fibers. It's the potential relationship of those, of those aggregates with those formed in uh, conditions like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. In those conditions, we also have the formation of these rod-like fibrils that are associated with the neurogenerative process in the brain. Now, Peter has established some conditions with this different protein and this may be a common mechanism and is this joint efforts from chemistry, cellular biology, structural biologists that perhaps can bring a more complete understanding of, of the process. Dr. Arinda Merkaji is working with Peter Sadler on this research. So can you tell me how do these fibers actually form? These fibers that we have observed are actually forming on surfaces. They form on different kinds of surface, starting from foam bar, or a glass slide, or a mica. So you see them on different surfaces, and the reason they form is something that we are investigating right now. We see them forming, and we see that they aggregate in different conditions, but we have to see that what conditions actually are responsible for the, those fibril formation. How will you now move this research forward? We have to see if the fibrils can form under real life conditions. This protein is there in our serum. So if we take serum and then we do the experiments in serum, like take the protein in serum and then do the same, ex follow the same experimental conditions and try to deposit them on surfaces. So that would be an interesting start. If we still can see formation of fibrils, that means the salt concentrations of serums and other concentrations of different stuffs that are present in the serum doesn't matter, it can still form fibers. So it is just like taking the experiment more towards real life. That's our main approach. Ideally, what we really want to understand is the mechanism by which proteins can assemble in this amyloid form. And if we understood those rules, we could actually target small drug molecules that would stop that assembly or after those, those amyloids are formed, uh, molecules that could 
disrupt them, destroy them, and clear the brain from, from those deposits. It's exciting, I think, in general, to, to think about the brain. And uh, after all, we have quite a lot of metal ions in the brain. We have manganese, we have copper, we have iron, and so on. And they, they have to be very carefully looked after. And the, the way in which they're moved around the brain and their movements are regulated is very important. And if something goes wrong, could that be triggering certain disease processes? This is really an exciting area for study.